Good evening, hyperspinners. Today I had a request to set up the Philips CDI system, so get ready. All right, guys, let's get started. So I look forward to you guys uh, requesting uh, various videos. Otherwise, it is literally just whatever comes to mind moments before I start recording. So, um, you know, we'll, we can complete whatever you guys like um, or we'll just uh, wing it. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, we are looking at the Philips CDI uh, system that we're going to be setting up today. And first things first, you're going to open up HyperHQ. You're going to go to Main Menu Wizard, and you're going to uh, push the plus sign and type in the system Philips CDI uh, system. Uh, basically, I don't want to do it right now because I don't want to sort through this drop down. But once you've done that, uh, you're going to be congratulated uh, for setting that system up, and then you'll return back to the wheel settings. Uh, folder here and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So you're going to have the execution as hyper launch and PC as disabled. I've got executable and the game path as blank and I've got everything disabled here. Uh, this should pre-populate the hyper launch XE Philips CDI uh, ROM name and we're going to move on to the wheel tab here and this is all default. I I've got the alpha set to 0.15 just because I kind of like the watermark look when it is displaying the game theme. That is just uh, my sort of standard uh, setup. Same with the navigation themes. I always like to reload backgrounds, animate out default themes, and then the clones use parent videos. Uh, those are always set to defaults for me. So also wheels only. So this particular system has a number of games and they are larger games and I'm a little choosy so I just selected wheels only so whenever I've got a full database it will only display games that you know have a wheel. Uh, next we've got video nothing uh, fancy there sounds those are default and then special art uh, if you guys have been following my videos I've got a nice frame uh, look around my hyperspin displays uh, genre art as well as the system name and the year that it was created so that's what this is all about so I've got the A, B, and C enabled and then here are my settings to get that uh, set up uh, if you've already set that up uh, within your system you can easily just copy these settings from your INI uh, file uh, a previous INI file in your settings folder and you'll be able to paste those in there so um, but since we're here, you can certainly just type those out. And that's all you've got to do for uh, HyperHQ. So we're uh, halfway there. Next, what you've got to do is you should now see a Philips CDI um, system here. And what you want to do is, or actually, I should have tested this beforehand, but I believe HyperList is back up and running. Yep, there we go. It is. So you're going to go to HyperList and you're going to go find the XML. So you just scroll right down to the bottom here. We're at hyperlist.hyperspinfe.com and we're going to go to Philips CDI here and you're just going to click this XML button. Once you've done that you're just going to drop that file into your database folder and we're going to go down here Philips CDI that should be there because you created the uh, folder with the HyperHQ. And you'll drop that file in here. If you want the genres, uh, you can use Don's uh, Hyperspin tools and you'll be able to basically extract those genres out as you see here. Uh, if you haven't uh, used that tool already, definitely check out my video on uh, Don's tools and the features that it provides. It's pretty quick and uh, easy to to use uh, but let's go ahead and uh, keep moving on this so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, minimize this we're gonna go back to rocket launcher and we've got Philips CDI and this is just how I've set this up so 
Um, you know, there's more than one way to, you know, cook this goose. Um, if you go to the modules tab, you're going to find all the systems or the uh, emulators that the system is compatible with. So we got RetroArch, uh, Mess and Mame. Mess and Mame uh, sort of combined forces, uh, you know, maybe a year or two ago. So, you know, just a heads up there. And then there's the CDI MU, and I believe this requires a premium, uh, like you have to pay for it, uh, you know, to use that emulator, or it's a trial version of some kind. So what I ended up doing is I've used uh, the MAME and MESS sort of uh, module. So what you need to do is just go to the emulators tab and push the plus sign here. And what you'll see is something like this. And you'll type in the, the name. It can be whatever you want. I typed in MESS164, but you know that's not really relative here because I ended up updating. So the, the name doesn't really matter here. But the path uh, I've got set to the main mess uh, folder that I've uh, set up, and we'll be talking about that in just a moment. So I'm going to include this um, main build on the FTP, so it should be just drag and drop for you guys. So uh, the naming convention should be the same. Uh, just put the path of uh, your drive here. Um, you can click the magnifying glass to do that, or you know. You could just take my settings, but that's if you are on the E drive. Anyway, so the ROM extensions we're going to be uh, using 7Z, Q, bin, and CDI. And then the modules, you're going to be pointing this to your rocket launcher folder and your modules, and then mess, and then the mess auto hotkey. So that's all there is to it there. And we're going to close that out. So you're all set with this emulators tab. Uh, you will want to point your games to the location of your um, your files. So you'll just push the plus sign and you'll path it to the place that you're uh, looking at. So we're going to move on and I realize that we have skipped the settings tab so I'm going to go ahead and back out to that. And everything that I've got set up here, it looks like it's default the virtual drive. I've got using SCSI to true. I've got the 7Z set to true, and yep, skip checks. I've got set to ROM and MU. Everything else is set to default. Uh, so if you're using the Rocket Launcher videos as a baseline, uh, you should have all the same uh, settings that I've got here. Next, I'm gonna uh, zip over to bezels. And it looks like everything's set to default, which means there will be bezels. And there's one other tab that we want to look at, and that is Fade General. Outside of these three tabs, everything else is set to Global, so that's why I'm uh, looking specifically at these. Uh, it looks like everything is set to Default, so there's nothing fancy here. And then we're going to go to the Modules tab, so we're just about done uh, setting this system up. Uh, so what we've got to do is if you click on the mess, well, let, let's see what's in here. Mess auto hotkey. I'm going to click this little uh, icon with the orange header. And it looks like everything is set to default. CDI, everything's set to default. Yeah, so there's really no monkey business happening here. So I'm going to look at the MAME just to be safe here, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have the same... Uh, same story here. So just to be safe, uh, since we are in here, I'm pretty sure we're using the mess auto hotkey because we just looked at that. But uh, since MAME and mess uh, sort of combined forces, it is sort of a, a weird one here. But basically, we've got a cheat mode. Uh, that is, if you hold down whatever uh, key that you set here, um, that will trigger MAME to be in cheat mode and your high scores won't be saved. But what you can do is if you hold that button down during that fade in screen after you select your game. So if I were to hold down the H button, uh, you know, it would say loading com complete. And as soon as that game starts, uh, you would then see your cheats displayed in your, you know, when you hit tab to configure uh, main, you'd see cheats enabled. Uh, so cheat mode, I've got set to true because I like the option available and everything else is set to default here. We've got the main 
uh, BIOS, uh, you just point that to your uh, root, um, you know, BIOS folder, and that looks like everything else is good. We're going to go to Link and Network. Everything's set to default. Here's the Philips CDI. Looks like everything's set to default. And yep, there's nothing left to it, guys. So. Uh, you know, whenever we're dealing with mess and name, it is uh, certainly confusing because there's a lot going on. So that is the setup with Rocket Launcher UI, and we are almost out of the woods. So what we're going to do is we're going to minimize this because we have Hyper Launch and we have uh, Hyper HQ setup. Now what we're going to do is go to the emulator itself, and this is going to be the pack that I included on the FTP, just so you don't have to worry about all the finicky of, uh, you know, what messes messes. Um, so what you've got to do is when you've got this pack, just open up the name INI uh, file here. You're going to find a couple paths up at the top. You're going to just change that those paths relative to yours, uh, depending on where you drop the, the pack itself. And, uh, you know, chances are you're just going to be changing the E drive and the arcade PC to whatever is relative to your hyperspin root folder. You're going to want to change that down at the configuration directory here as well. And everything else looks to be golden on that end. Just going to double check. Yep, so it's everything at the top, just these paths here and here, and you should be good to go. So, you know, you, you will have to find your games. Uh, I'm not going to be covering that, but the pack itself will include basically the setup to get things uh, running outside of uh, your games, uh, just the standard emulator. So I'm going to open up the INI uh, folder here, and you do see there's some support for other systems. It doesn't even look like there's any paths that you need to uh, mess with there, so you're good to go. It looks like the Creative Vision um, has some paths that you could change if you really wanted to uh, use this uh, format for that system as well and yeah that's that's it guys so the other files that are in these folders are basically the default that come with it i don't think there's anything that you've got to do to actually uh, you know tinker with here so that should get you going uh definitely let me know uh in the comments below if it's uh causing any issues i don't think it will i will uh throw in the caveat here that uh, since this is a CD uh, sort of system, I wanted the approach of having the ability to see the compatibility because there's not a, a huge compatibility for this system in general. So, I've, like I mentioned earlier, I've only got a, a handful of games that I wanted to uh, have available. So, uh, when you launch this, um, you know, through Hyperspin or Rocket Launcher, you will uh, have to press the uh, left or right button uh, or keystroke uh, to basically get rid of the nag screen and that nag screen just tells you like what's wrong with the game itself uh, you know just I, I'd like that option at least for this system uh, just because I, I want to know what I'm working with uh, but if we're talking about MAME itself I definitely don't have that nag screen there because those games are pretty much spot on always uh, so yeah that, that's all there is to it uh, when you do launch the game, I believe you will get a uh, sort of CDI screen. Um, and all you've got to do is hit um, open tray, uh, I believe. Here, actually, we'll just, we'll just do that uh, here in a second here. So, yep. So when you launch this, this is where you could hold down the uh, key for cheats to activate it. And here's the nag screen. So this looks like it's 100%, uh, which is awesome. So I'm just going to hit left and right to make that go away. And this does take a, a moment to uh, load here. And I just want to show off that there is a nag screen. Uh, or I, I don't know if it's a nag screen. It, it's probably more of a, a BIOS screen that is uh, relative to the system itself. I never had the system. Um, Yep, so there it is. So we've got Play CDI. You just use the arrow keys to uh, move the mouse. And then you click the Enter key or your uh, basically X, or sorry, A button, at least for me. Uh, 
And once you've done that, the game starts and you're all set. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. And there you have it. That's Philips CDI uh, system. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Alright guys, actually I uh, got carried away here and I didn't actually open up the emulator itself to configure the settings, so, uh, you know, happens, so here we go. We're going to open up the uh, main XC and it's going to show you a screen very similar to this. We're just going to scroll down to the bottom, configure general inputs, I'm going to hit enter. You're going to see, just like uh, your MAME setup, uh, it's very similar in nature. You're just going to go down to player one and hit enter. You're going to select all your keys. So your button one, so this is the, um, basically, uh, the key that I select to uh, start the game, essentially, from that uh, open tray. Uh, you're just going to click enter and then select the button. You can see there's multiple buttons that I've got set up here. Uh, in case I, I need it, but you know, that's your choice. So just um, map your uh, buttons one through eight and you should be good to go. And you'll want to also set up your uh, start and select and that would be your setup for player one. You want to do that for player two as well. So I'm just going to go to the bottom, return to the previous screen, hit player two, do the same thing here and we're going to hit up to go to the very bottom and return to previous menu. And we might change the user interface if you have any of those uh, needs there. I didn't have anything that I've custom made here, so I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that. And then I check other controls as well. And we've got the player starts and the coins. But outside of that, everything else stayed the same. And now this time, I really mean it. I will uh, catch you next time. Bye.